you know, it means don't go beyond this point. Did you know that a lot of what people confuse about the law and confuse about grace is just like that sign, do not trespass. Don't go past this point because if you do, you're going to suffer consequences. Like if it says do not trespass, violators will be shot. You could get shot. Ooh. Or it could say do not trespass, violators will be prosecuted. Oh no, you could be locked up and thrown in jail or fined. So whenever you read in like King Jameth about trespasses, that means like crossing over the line that God draws a line in the sand and says, look, okay, look, I got you covered here. You know, you're underneath the protection. You know, you're, I got you right here, you know, and you're safe. But if you trespass out from under my protection, you're on your own, buddy. <laughs> That's why Jesus said you reap what you sow, man. You did it. You get it. You got it. Good because that's what it really boils down to. It's not so much that we're put under the law to do something that we don't want to do, because frankly, you have freedom to do anything you want to do. It doesn't say you have freedom to escape the consequences of your actions. It doesn't say that you aren't going to pay the price, you know, to stand before Jesus one day and say, well, you know, I did trespass, so I guess I did sin. Oh. Okay, and I forgot to ask forgiveness, but I guess, you know, I'm saved anyway, so, you know, but now I have to suffer consequences. I don't like this law and grace thing. So you see, the grace was given to you by where you would be saved, but you may pass through fire as though, you know, singeing the flesh, you know, and consuming some of your stupidity in order to be cleaned up a little bit, you know, from all your dumb works that you've done. But the reality is, is that with trespass, if you could just figure out, don't do it, then don't do it. That's simple. And whenever people get into law about what to do, I like to say, well, the law is boiled up to pretty simple. What you love to do is to make Jesus happy. So whatever Jesus tells you to do, then Make him happy. <laughs> Works for me, but then I'm saved by grace. <laughs> How are you saved? Somewhere along the line in daily light, God was in Christ reconciling the world unto himself, not imputing their trespasses unto them. It pleased the Father that in him should all fullness dwell and having made peace through the blood of his cross by him to reconcile all things unto himself. Mercy and truth are met together. Righteousness and peace have kissed each other. You know, I love that because mercy and truth have are met together. It's true. You're guilty. But mercy says you're forgiven. So righteousness is taken care of and you have peace with God. Makes simple understandable ways to me. I know the thoughts that I think toward you, saith the Lord. Thoughts of peace and not of evil. Come now, let us reason together, saith the Lord, though your sins be as scarlet, they shall be as white as snow. Though they be red like crimson, they shall be as wool. So the Lord doesn't say to you, look, sinner, repent. No, he says, come. Come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden now, I'll give you rest. Come unto me, let me explain it to you. Come unto me, I paid the price. Come unto me, I'm the one who actually can forgive you. So the Lord says, come unto me, let us reason together, you and I, though your sins be as scarlet. They are, they are. Though they be red as crimson, they are. They shall be as white as snow. Because the Lord can do it, but you can't. How about letting him try who is like unto God? Who is a God like unto thee? Who is like you that pardons iniquity? Wait a minute. I thought God was a God of judgment that he's going to wipe everybody out. 
God is a God that pardons iniquity. All you need to do is ask. It's that simple. Pretty stupid to wind up in hell. When in reality, you can wind up in heaven just by asking. Acquaint now thyself with him and be at peace. Get to know God. Be at peace with him. Have the peace of God which passes all understanding. Be able to rule your hearts and minds so that whenever some trial comes or some incurable disease or whatever situation you find yourself in, you can have peace. Hmm. Don't you want to be at peace? Not rest in peace? <laughs> or be broken into pieces. For it is God which worketh in you both to do and to will of his good pleasure. Work out your salvation with fear and trembling. Lord, thou wilt ordain peace for us, for thou hast wrought all our works in us. Thy kingdom come. In the days of these kings shall the God of heaven set up a kingdom which shall never be destroyed. And the kingdom shall not be left to other people, but it shall break in pieces and consume all these kingdoms, and it shall stand forever. Yay! Here come the king. Here come the king. Here come the king. Or is that the judge? Oh, he does both? Cool! Here come the judge. Here come the judge. Here come the judge. A stone cut out without hands, not by might, nor by power, but by my spirit, saith the Lord of hosts. So many times people tell me about they want to go out and get a gun, you know, and keep it in their home. So many people tell me that they want to join the military, you know, and go out and kill somebody in the name of God or in a country or whatever reason they figure that they got to kill somebody, you know, because they, they like it. I'm John Wayne. I like shooting them peoples. Or, you know, some guy gets a gun thinks he's a gang member just because he can pull a trigger, you know, and little does he know that God can pull his life, you know, at any moment in time. <laughs> Zippo. And it's only his mercy that keeps the guy going down the road till one day, checkout time. And when he gets in the checkout line, he doesn't have the price to pay for what he did. Unfortunately, you're going to have to put some of those items back, like your eternal salvation, it's gone. Or your, guess what, your being saved, it's gone, because by the time you come to the cash register and you got to check out, God's checking you out. So, while people may get into this whole idea of being strong, you know, and got to fight and duke it out, you know, and assert ourselves and be, you know, like Mr. Macho, you know, and we got to win. It's not by might. It's not. It's not by the power of your strength or the gun that you hold or the country you live in. In fact, not only is it not by might, but it's not by power. Hmm. I thought I had power with God. I thought I had the power of God. I thought I had the Holy Spirit. But by my spirit, saith the Lord, You think the battle is spiritual? For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities and powers and spiritual wickedness in high places. And that the battle isn't about life and death, but that it's about something else. Maybe fruits of the Spirit that are being worked out in us so that we'd be ready for a spiritual kingdom, for a spiritual body, for heaven. Because you see, a physical assertion and anger and wrath and violence will not be tolerated in the kingdom of God. God could just think a thought and they're terminated. Hmm. So I don't need to take up the sword? Not unless you want to perish by him. Personally, I'd rather my last words on my lips be, Father, forgive them for they know not what they do, than to be, God, kill them for what they did. Hmm. Unto you is given to know the mystery of the kingdom of God. So is the kingdom of God, as if a man should cast seed into the ground, and should sleep and rise the next day, and the seed should spring up and grow up, he knoweth not how. But when the fruit is brought forth, immediately he puts in the sickle, because the harvest is come. Be ye ready, for in such an hour as you think not, the Son of Man comes. The Spirit and the bride say, Come, and let, that, and let him that heareth say, 
come. You know, you got a lot of opportunities to do whatever you want to do. You can trespass. You can cross over the line. You can tow the line. You can step on the line. You can walk down the line. Or you could just do something a little simpler. You could realize that because you're forgiven, you can forgive others. Because while you were disgusting, God loved you. Maybe you can love others too. Because you were a jerk, maybe you could love a jerk. Because you were an idiot, maybe you could love an idiot. Hmm. Does that mean? <coughs> Bless me. <laughs> Does that mean that if you were an enemy of God and forgiven, you can love your enemies and forgive them? I don't know. Can you? <laughs>